Hi again, uh, here we are to continue talking about uh, making our JavaScript quiz, right? And uh, so far, we've um, we've got, uh, you know, the, the, the question showing up, but now we need to list our multiple choice answers, right? And, um, you know, we've got our, um, our uh, you know, our form set up here, and we're showing the the question here as an h1 and then we've got a ul here and we want to create a list of answers and so the goal for this is to um, grab all of the strings from this array and then wrap each one in an li and a input with a and make them a radio button right so it's it's a little complicated right but let's just see if we can get started right so so how are we going to do it well before, I think like there's a, a bunch of ways you could do this. We could just write inside. You could actually just do it like this. You could say, you know, dollar sign, curly brackets, and then you could do a for each loop inside here. And I um, I think that that's a good method. It works fine, but it could be get pretty ugly because, you know, you could say, you know, uh, a question, um, you know, dot um, answer, that's an array, and then dot for each and you know and then this is getting pretty long and complicated right you know so it might look like that right and I think that that's okay there's nothing wrong with it what I'm gonna do though is I'm gonna take this out and I'm gonna ask myself well you know before I can't before I you know am able to list these things what do I need to do so my answer is like well I need to make a list of, of of these items here right so why don't I actually do that before I start making the form right so I'm actually gonna do it outside here and then I'll just put um, maybe I'll just put answers right there right and so I'll make a variable called answers so I'll say you know answers uh, well actually let's declare it let's say like let answers equal you know an empty string and then I'll do um, you know a quiz or a questions question not questions with an s right because it's going to be this question here I'll say question dot a that's my array of answers dot for each and then each answer will be passed into this Oh, I, I forgot I put the function in here, right? What am I doing here? That was not right. Let's fix that, right? So I'm going to say question.a.foreach, dot dot and then I'm going to put a function in my for each here, and then I'll have the answer passed into that function. So now remember, um, I can actually I can see it right here. Let me zoom out just a tiny bit, right? Okay. When I get to question here, right questions is the entire array up here one question is one object within that array one of these right and then if I do um, dot a on that question I'm getting this array of answers and each answer is a string right and when I'm doing for each for each you know value here I'm getting one of those values as answer Right, so this should be one of these guys, and it should be one, you know, it should do it once for each of them, right? Okay, great. So let's zoom in a little bit here. And um, so what are we going to do? Well, let's take our answer um, string. Actually, let's just call this, instead of answer up here, let's call this answer string, okay? That'll kind of remind us that it's a string. Plus, it clashes with this variable here, right? So so let's uh, let's call that answer string and then we'll say answer string plus equals and we'll use the back ticks again and what we want to do is each answer is going to be a list item like this and then inside each of these list items we're going to have a label
oops, label, there we go, right? And inside the label, see this gets pretty complicated. That's why I think like maybe it's better to do this outside of here, right? So inside the label, we're gonna have an input, okay? And it'll be type uh, radio, because we wanna do radio buttons, right? And, um, you know, and then we'll need to do a little more with this, because remember, radio buttons need to have a name, and they need to share that name with everybody, right? But first of all, let's just get them to display. So I've got my label here, and um, what am I going to do here? I think I'm going to put the text after the label like this, maybe, right? So I'll put this guy here, so it'll be input followed by the text, and then I'm going to use the the dollar sign question mark and the answer remember is the string for the answer so I'll put that here okay so there's my my label and we want to do the label because you'll be able to click on the answer text to activate the radio button so you won't have to just click on the little circle right so there we got type radio I've got my answer here and then now Oh yeah, I made this answer string, so I'll have to change it down here because I'll like when I'm all done looping through the answers and making the list, I'll want to take all those li tags and plug them into this ul right here. So this answers down here will be answer string, right? Okay, let's give that a try and see if it's working for us, right? So I'll go to the to the browser here, and there's our quiz. So that, hey, that's looking pretty good, right? And I can click on you know each of these radio buttons I can click I don't have to just click on the circle here I can click on the the text here and it activates the button right we can style away this um, bullet point so don't worry about that I know everybody's gonna be annoyed by the bullet point but when we get to our style sheet that can be gone right And we can customize these uh, these radio buttons too so everything seems to be working pretty good um, oh pardon me we still need a, a couple things right so Right now, if I, well, actually we need a lot of things still, right? But right now, the first thing I'm thinking of is that if you, you know, click on one of the radio buttons, you should only be able to choose one. And right now, when I click on this one, I can choose both, right? Or even all three. And the problem with that is because the input right here, um, these are grouped by their name. So if you have radio buttons that share the same name, only within the same form, only one of them can be active at a time. But right now my radio buttons don't have a name, so they're not grouped, right? They're all independent, right? So let's give them all a name. So we gotta decide like how to name them, okay? So, you know, uh, you know the names need to be unique across the forms too, right? So um, so what we can do is we can we can take the number, right? So we can say like, hey, all you guys are gonna be like question one, right you know something like that and then these guys when we do our second question you guys will all be radio button name question two okay um, here's a thing about for each so for each takes a function it's a callback and then that callback gets a couple parameters from for each right it gives you the a value from the array that you're calling for each on and then it also gives you an index so I'm gonna put an I here and actually if we wanted the index for the answer we could put the I here also but this could be a problem if we have I twice because um, you know they're they're the same variable name so we'd be able to access the I here but we wouldn't be able to access this I within here because it would be this one okay so let's change this a little bit let's say um, let's call it question index or Q index and this will be like answer index right we actually don't need this one but I'm gonna put it there anyway okay so now I've got my question index right and I want everybody in here to have the same question index okay so I'm gonna go in here and give my radio button a name property and I have to have the quotation marks here, so I'm gonna say name equals quotation marks. And then within the quotation marks, I'll use the dollar sign curly brackets, and I'll add, um, how about let's do, uh, let's do this, let's say um, 
question dash. I'm going to put this actually outside. So everybody will say question. And then what I want to do is have the index there, right? So I'll say Q index. So this should generate um, an attribute on each HTML element with the name question dash followed by the number of the question. So that means that um, each question will be numbered 0, 1, 2, 3, right? And within that, for each of the answers, each answer will have the same number here. So it'll be question 1, question 1, question 1 for the first three answers. And then question two, question three, you know, question two, question two for the next one, right? Let's actually, I'm not doing a good job explaining that. Let's actually look at it, right? So um, I'm going to refresh my page here. It seems to be working. And now when I click, you'll see each one of these, only one of them can be active. And when I click down here, only one of these can be active. So let's understand like why that works again. I'm going to inspect. And when I look at the, um, the uh, elements here, you can see that in this list right here, the second list, it says name is question one, name is question one, and the third possible answer is question one. Okay, so question one, question one, question one, right? And then if I went to the first, um, I guess that is the first form. I don't know why that, oh yeah, you know what, wait, it's way up here, sorry. Yeah, and if I go to my first form, you'll see this one's question um, zero, and the second one will be question zero, right? So as long as all three of these have the same name, then only one of them can be active, okay? Okay, great. So that's working pretty good. Um, what else do we need to do here? I think before, between now and the next video, I'm going to change my spacing to two spaces here um, because it's driving me nuts that this is tabbed so far over, right? But I'll, I'll, I'll deal with the formatting offline before I do the next video. Anyway, um, maybe that's a good place to stop and then we'll continue. Remember down here, we've kind of outlined like what we need to do. And so far we've got our form. So that's like, uh, that's like check. Oops, we got, wait, um, we got this guy, we got our H1, we don't have the div alert, so we got to put that in, and we've got our UL, and we've got our LI tags, and we don't have the submit button, so we'll need to add those, right? Um, why don't you try that on your own? So you can add those elements the same way that I added the list items and the UL and the H1 and stuff. So try that on your own and then I'll cover it in the next video and then we'll continue. And again, we have, still have a lot to do because we'll want our, we'll actually want the, the order of the answers here to be random, right? So we'll want to mix those up. And then uh, maybe we'll want to, um, you know, also, you know, check when you click that submit button whether the question was correct or not, right? So anyway, thanks for watching, and um, I'll continue this in the next video.